All right, guys, welcome to part six of the Kawasaki KX80 Big Bore um, fix up. So, previous video, we had the problem of the coolant leak, and now I took off the top end, as you guys saw from the previous video. And we found out that the piston is a big bore, and the cylinder is a 99cc um, cylinder, so it's off of a KX100, I figured out from the comments, and uh, that means it's 99cc, and 0 0.080 is a 80cc. I believe it's a KX100 head as well, because I was looking up something on eBay, and a lot of the KX80 heads aren't as wide as this, so it doesn't match up with the cylinder. Unless someone like used this one and just like dug it out a little bit more, I'm not sure. But this is a one through two, it says on the side like that. I think the KX is, I think the KX80 is one through one, so I think that's the difference on them. As you can see, the head is in pretty decent shape. There's only a couple marks right here, which isn't a huge deal. Um, a lot of people said to take a piece of glass and then use some rubbing compound or sandpaper and rub it like that until you flatten out this a little bit, which I'm going to do that a little bit later. But first, I'm going to fill in these little gaps right here. You can see it's very pitted right here, and there's another spot too. Oh, right there. You can see it goes um, all the way across right there, that line. So I'm going to take some JB Weld and fill in these cracks before I sand it down just so that those cracks are filled in and that we don't get any coolant leaking. Because that one crack right there, which that's where it was leaking from, can leak right into the cylinder because this crack goes all the way along. So the coolant fills up these gaps, which line up with these right here, and the coolant goes up into here. And if that crack doesn't match the gasket, that will go all the way into the cylinder. So I bet you the cylinder was getting wet with water and misfiring at some points when coolant was leaking in there. That's probably why the bike was running pretty crappy. So I think when, once we fix this, put a new gasket in there, everything should be good. So first thing we want to do with this thing is really clean it up so that the JB Weld um, makes good contact with the, with the head. Um, so we're going to take some of this spray here. This is like degreaser spray. Just gonna spray that all over it, all over it, and then let that sit for a little bit, and then spray this in, just to clean up all the oil and stuff that's on it, because um, we don't want any oil on it. We don't want anything on it. And I'm gonna take a little bit piece of sandpaper and also kind of just rub that, just so we get a better contact for the JB Weld to stick. And I think JB Weld takes. Um, um, I think it takes like 24 hours. I also got this other stuff that uh, takes a little bit less time, but I think after six hours it should be good enough to slap in the bike. We will see though. Um, I'll look up on that and see that. But yeah, we're gonna clean it up here and then we'll be good to go. So now I'm just gonna take some sandpaper. It doesn't really matter what grit, as long as it's not too heavy. And then just scratch up the surface where you're gonna apply the JB Weld, just so that it can have a better contact. But yeah, we're just gonna scratch up the surface right there, just like very lightly. I'm using like 800 grit right now, so it's not gonna make a huge difference. I just wanna have a couple scratches in there, just so that the JB Weld has something to connect to. Um, and then we're gonna spray it with the degreaser stuff again, and we'll be good to go. Now that that's done, we're going to apply equal strips of JB Weld to it. I've got this little mixer, and then we're gonna apply it to the, the cylinder head. So stay tuned for that. All right, so make sure you have a pretty clean surface. Just get all the dust off of it. Um, you're gonna take the black kind, do one little strip right here. All right, so that's pretty close to the right amount. I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit. Make sure it's that dark gray color. And then we're just gonna take this and apply it to the cylinder head and fill in the cracks. All right, so I've already applied a little bit 
to the, the cylinder head. But I just want to make sure there's enough in there. So just apply as much as you can to the cracks and then just smooth that out. We're just gonna smooth it out now. It's hard to smooth it out when there's a huge hole in it, but do the best that you can. Let's see here. And I know how to do this because I looked up a tutorial on YouTube and this guy was using it for a lawnmower head and he cut right through it and they used JB Weld and ran it with the head. And uh, the head held up, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try it first here. See if the JB Weld works, and if it doesn't, then we'll just buy a new head. But I was looking on eBay, and I could not find one anywhere to save my life. So, right there, that looks pretty good. Um, you can see that all the little cracks are filled up now. So I think we're good to go. Alright, so it looks like we got everything ready to go. Um, we, we're letting this dry. As you can see, there's really no blemishes in the head anymore. I filled in all the little cracks. Hopefully that sandpaper is going to take off the remaining metal. So we'll be flush, and then we'll be good to go. Um, now we just wait. So, after that, we're going to put on the new gasket. Um, tighten it down, and we should be good to go. Put some more cooling in it, and off we'll go. Alright guys, so it's been 24 hours exactly, um, and the JB Weld looks like it cured. It's right here, this is where I covered it, and a little bit right here. So now we're going to take a, a flat surface, put some sandpaper on it, and just lightly go over that so it skims off all these imperfections. And then we're going to put it back on the bike with the new gasket and see if that works. Alright, so as you guys can see, I just shaved off a little bit of this, this head. Um, it used to be all pitted right over here, and it's a little bit pitted still, but I'm afraid to take off any more metal. Um, it's not bad at all, though. It's pretty dang smooth compared to what it was. This is now smooth and flush to that, so the gasket should sit nice and flush to the head, and then connect to the cylinder correctly without any coolant leaking. So I think that's going to fix it. If not, we'll just do some more sanding, and uh, we'll get it right eventually. But I think that's going to fix. It's pretty dang flat. Lay on the flat surface, doesn't move up and down at all. Just very secure. Um, it looks pretty good. The head is smooth on the inside. So we'll see what happens. Alright guys, got the head back on. Everything looks pretty dang tight. Um, hopefully the new gas is going to hold that. And uh, hopefully that JB Weld holds. So right when we get coolant, we'll put a little bit in here and uh, get some coolant running to it so we don't blow it up. And uh, we'll see if she runs. All right guys, so quick promo video. Um, as you guys know, I'm selling the ATC 250R uh, right here. The guy's picking it up from, I think down south. But anyway, I saw that the tire was flat on it and I just wanted to do a quick, quick promo video. So the company Audu sent me this pump. It's a two-cylinder air compressor pump. It says um, it's made of cast alloy air pump casting with cooling fins for quick heat displacement. Uh, comes with these little gadgets right here. This one's for pumping up the rafts. This one you can use for carb cleans. This one you can use for like basketballs, bikes, anything like that. So anyway, it comes with a nice PSI gauge right here. It tells you uh, how much PSI you're inflating your tire to. And um, yeah, so it's a double cylinder. It's a little bit higher than um, the other ones they sell. But this company also sent me the portable battery packs, which if you buy one of those, you can use those portable battery packs and hook it up right to this, which is super cool. Um, all you do is connect this onto here like this. It twists right on. Pretty easy. And then you just put this on.
pumped up. And then you just turn it off like that. And then disconnect it. And you're good to go. Nice and pumped up tire. Obviously the battery is dying, but um, it continues to pump up to 150 PSI, as you can see on the gauge. So super nice tool, you can use it to like spray out your carburetor if you need it. You can use it to pump up tires, and it's really nice to have a little portable air compressor wherever you go. All right, so I just added coolant, let the bike run for about three minutes just so the coolant can get pumped throughout the system and then I'm going to check it again when, when the bike gets a little bit colder um, and then add some more coolant and top it off and then we'll take it for a quick rip. Alright so this bike's ready to go. Let's take it for its first test drive with the shaved head and gasket. We'll see if it makes a difference. Hopefully it doesn't leak coolant everywhere. That would really suck. See if we've got any gas in here. A little bit. Not a whole lot. Should be enough. Alright, here we go. Let it warm up for a bit too. Take it around the yard first here. Pretty puppy little machine. Still warming up quite a bit. We'll check for the coolant lake here pretty soon. I don't think there's any leaking cooling yet. Very hard to tell. I think that's just mud. Pretty good. Better than it was. This thing's a crazy little bike. That's all from just mud. So I think we fixed the cooling issue. That's really good. It's running like really crispy. Man, this sounds really good. I'm happy with it. I think we're done. I think this bike is finished idling nice and perfect oh baby 
Chuck. Doesn't look cool anymore. Done with it. Woohoo, finally. Jeez, that took forever. So we finally finished it up. No leaking. Runs pretty much perfect. I mean, the jetting probably could be messed with a little bit more, but it's good as it's gonna get, I think. All right, just get done with the ride. No coolant leaked from the head. So I think the JP Weld worked. That was awesome. New gasket, new JB welded head, sanded down, all the comments seemed to be helping, so that was good. Um, yeah, no leaks whatsoever on the motor now, and it runs flawlessly. Uh, jetting maybe could be tuned a little bit more, but it's pretty dang good, it's pretty close to what it needs to be. So that's pretty much it, that wraps up the KX80 Big Bore fix up. We decided to dig into it and we found the problem and fixed it and this is what we got. So thanks for all the comments again and uh, I guess we'll be on to the next one. So stay tuned, we're probably going to do a ride in the back with this, a full video on that and uh, just really rip it. So stay tuned for that one and until next time guys, we are out.